It's my pleasure, first of all, to introduce the first uh, speaker, which is Nancy Yeraba. And I had a wonderful... <laughs> exactly. Nancy is from Tanzania. Nancy is from Tanzania. We had a wonderful uh, hour that we just talked here before. Uh, she comes from a family with four girls and one boy, and uh, so well blessed. But her father was very clear, you're not getting married before you get your education. And I think that, that uh, deserves some credit in itself. She wanted to be a medical doctor just to please her father to some extent, but then she became a marine scientist. I call her the Sylvia Earl from Africa. She's actually the first woman in Tanzania who is a dive master. Uh, she spends a lot of time, exactly. 30% of her time being in the oceans, um, she looks at coral restorations and uh, aqua farming. She takes other people uh, down there and, uh, and shows them the beauty of actually where, what life depends on. But then when she was in the oceans, she realized that just doing research alone is not enough. Um, very passionate about women, very passionate about social inclusion very passionate about community development. She saw the huge potential of food that these oceans offered, and she started and co-founded the Healthy Seaweed Company. 20,000 people in Tanzania are employed in seaweed. They're living in bismal circumstances. They're not getting paid as usual. All the money goes to the middlemen. Uh, they're earning 10 times more than what these women get. So she is now working with 130 women, uh, buying it from them four times more, putting the products into uh, food so that it is added value and that these people can make a living. Her plan is to reach 10,000 women by 2030. She will do it. And more importantly, feed millions of people in the low and middle income with the wonderful products. It is really my pleasure to introduce to you a wonderful, wonderful person, Nancy Iraba. As a child, I was never attracted to the sea. I grew up in a coastal city, Dar es Salaam, in Tanzania, but my parents never took me to the beach, and I was a non-swimmer. Our community firmly believes that the ocean is only for fishes. I dreamt about a career as a medical doctor, and had no inkling that my destiny lie in the water. But everything changed when I was studying for a science degree and found myself aboard a ship that was taking ocean samples off the coast of Southeast Africa. The experience completely changed my perspective and I decided on doing a master's in marine sciences. While I was studying, COVID hit the world began to turn to healthier diets that would boost immune systems. It was then that I heard a comment on the radio from the World Health Organization identifying seaweed as one of the planet's most enriching foods. My attention was turned to the coast. The Tanzanian archipelago of Zanzibar is a center of farming seaweed. I began research on 20 Zanzibar coastal villages and found that 99% of the 11,000 tons of seaweed produced there each year was for export. And it appeared that seaweed nutritional properties were better known in the West than in my own country where it was being harvested. Seaweed is no export. Is, seaweed is no ordinary marine plant. In some parts of the world, it is known as seamoss, but many scientists call it ocean's superfood. Tanzania is the third largest seaweed producer in a $6 billion global industry. We have 20,000 seaweed farmers, most of them being women. So, I co-founded Healthy Seaweed Company with the vision of increasing local consumption of seaweed, both in my country and all across Africa. We are innovating in the production of diverse seaweed for food products, including gels and powders. 
while incorporating a social, a strong economic social agenda that improves the lives of women seaweed farmers by purchasing a kilo of seaweed at four times the price they would normally receive. To date, we have a products line of 13 seaweed for food products used in salads, juices, puddings, smoothies, candies, and seasonings. And these products are sustainable, gluten-free, and delicious. <laughs> these superfood products have been sold to six African countries via our online seaweed cafe. We are supporting 130 women seaweed farmers by providing training on climate-resilient seaweed farming methods, and we aim at reaching 10,000 seaweed farmers by 2030. Now, we are set to introduce school feeding programs, serving children with our nutritious seaweed porridge mixed with cassava and other staples to fight against undernourishment in Africa, which affects 20.4% of the population. <laughs> seaweed is like an underrated superhero against hunger problems. Unlike other crops, Seaweed does not need fresh water, arable land, or synthetic fertilizers. Plus, it cleans up the environment by soaking up carbon. We need to grow more seaweed and tell more people about its benefits. But we must ensure it's safe while being careful not to harm the ocean. And that we must improve cultivation techniques in light of current climate impacts while investing in seaweed farmers worldwide. There was a time I would not go near the sea. But in the past two years, I have gone from being a non-swimmer to a dive master. I have set up an, a non-profit to help Tanzanian marine scientists to gain dive certifications that will support their marine conservation work. I have helped 13 scientists to qualify as divers. I now know the ocean is full of magical things. One of them can help us avert a hunger catastrophe. Young leaders, let's unlock the potential of seaweed. Thank you. <laughs>